that led to an event in the next couple of weeks. Okay? So, I think this is... Next slide. If I applied to my CHR to do this experiment, they would say it's unethical. But if I call it surgery, I can bill for it. Okay? Do not allow a patient to sit on the floor, tachycardic, in pain, in AFib, getting ready to have a heart attack. Don't do it. Next. Now, am I the first guy to say beta blockers are good for you? No, I'm not. I'm, you know, lots of people do this. These are six studies showing that beta blockers prevent the risk of death in people with congestive heart failure. They've been shown to be effective in MI, heart failure, diabetics, lots and lots of places. Next slide. Now, this is a study that kind of solved the beta blocker problem. This is by a guy named Don Poldermans. And Don Poldermans looked at our paper and decided to see if it worked in high-risk people. He took patients and, who were coming for AAAs or AFBGs. He did histories and physicals on them, and he found people who were high-risk. And then he did dobutamine stress echoes on them and found people who were really high-risk. And then he operated and he had a 30% mortality. And then he did something stunning. He said, let's repeat the study. So he went back and he took 1,300 people coming for AAAs or AFBGs. He did histories and physicals, found 700 that were high risk. Then he did dobutamine stress echoes. He found 300 who were extremely high risk. And then he randomized to either standard care or bezopalol. And he operated. And he had a 30% mortality in the standard care group and a 3% in the bezoplol trade group. After he did 100 patients, the Data Safety and Monitoring Committee said, you must stop. You can't go on. Now, people have criticized this study because it's kind of small. It's only 100 people. But you've got to think about this. The reason they stopped was because it's unethical to continue standard care. You can't enroll patient number 108 in this study because it's wrong. What that implies is it's wrong for you to enroll patient number 108 in the standard care group. The other thing about this study that's important is that there were 10 people that even Don Polderman said, I'm too scared to do this to. And he sent them off to cardiology and half died. Okay, So this is telling you this reduces the risk about tenfold. What is this drug? This is kind of like metoprolol. He actually used IV metoprolol for the IV form, and you can reduce the risk about tenfold. Next. So what we're talking about is you bring patients in, you pre-op assess them. If they have known coronary disease and are stable, you give them a beta blocker, and then you operate. If they have risk factors, you give them a beta blocker, and you operate. If they don't have any risk factors, you just operate. If they have these things, unstable angina, CHF, new onset, C anything, send them to cardiology, let them do their work. Okay? If you believe Don Poldermans, hit the next slide, please, cardiology would be simply converted to coronary disease, beta blockers, risk, beta blockers, no risk, operate. We haven't quite gotten to this yet, but this is what Don Poldermans is telling you. Next slide. Now, there are people who can't take a beta blocker. They have asthma. They have some high-grade block. So we worked on developing a drug that you could use for people who couldn't tolerate a beta blocker. Okay? And we looked at a lot of alpha-2 agonists. And the reason we looked at alpha-2 agonists is that beta blockers block the end organ effect of catecholamines. Alpha-2 agonists block the release of catecholamines from the locus ceruleus. So instead of blocking the end organ effect, we just blocked the release. We tested three of them, uh, dexmedetomidine, mevazron, clonidine. This is the clonidine results. Randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blind trial, 200 patients, same stuff for non-cardiac surgery to VA hospital. We gave them a 0.2 milligram tablet the night before plus a patch, and then a 0.2 milligram tablet the day of. The reason you do this is the patch takes about 24 hours to have an effect. This is essentially a bolus plus an infusion of drug. We followed people out, standard stuff. Next slide. What about ischemia? Well, we cut the risk of ischemia about 50%. That's kind of nice. Next slide. The other thing we did was we cut 30-day mortality sevenfold okay, for $6 a patient. 
we cut two-year mortality in half. So here's a second line agent which allows you to reduce mortality. Next. Here's the survival curves, quantity reduced mortality, very similar to placebo. Next. Am I the first guy to say that clonidine is a good drug? No, in Europe they use it commonly. Uh, this is a study reducing myocardial ischemia. Next. Here's another one reducing myocardial ischemia. Next. 